Section 3. God is our true parent. 1. As God's substantial object partners, a man represents God's yang characteristics and a woman represents God's yin characteristics. The principle of creation divides God's characteristics into two genders and then brings them into union again as one body. Through union they come to resemble God's original characteristics. When they are born, a man and a woman each resemble one facet of God's dual characteristics. Accordingly, the union of one man and one woman is the union of God's yang and yin characteristics. In other words, by uniting they become a harmonious being that resembles God. Thus the two people as husband and wife form a union that resembles all facets of God. The man becomes the second self of the true father by representing God's yang characteristics, and the woman becomes the second self of the true mother, representing God's yin characteristics. In addition, the man and woman are each an individual representative of God. The parent-child relationship is the center of the universe. 2. God is the father of humanity. We are the sons and daughters of God. If God is the first generation, we are the second generation God. The first generation God is plus, and the second generation God is minus. Plus and minus automatically unite as one, that is the principle of creation. 3. What is the center of heaven and earth, and what is the root of the universe? When I entered into a mystical state and prayed to God about this, He told me that it is the relationship between the father and his sons and daughters, that is, the parent-child relationship. If you think this refers to the relationship between a physical father and mother and their sons and daughters, you do not understand it fully. I am talking about the relationship between God and human beings. 4. God and human beings have a parent-child relationship. How do we come to this conclusion? When you enter a mystical state in your prayer and ask, if human beings are the center of the created world, what is the center of the universe? You will receive a simple answer, it is the parent-child relationship. You may think that the parent-child relationship here refers to the relationship between your physical mother and father and yourself, that is, a relationship centered on human morals and ethics, but that is not what I am talking about. The parent-child relationship between God and human beings united in heart is multidimensional. It is that point that is the center of the universe. 5. From the viewpoint of love, we are each the fruit of a mother's love, of a father's love and of God's love. Vertically we are the fruit of God's love, horizontally we are each the fruit of a mother and a father's love. Because we want to follow this love forever and unite with it, we can never betray it. We want to stay and live in that love forever. That is why even though mothers and fathers are fallen, they still want to live with their children forever. 6. God too has a mind and a body, which are absolutely united in a relationship of subject partner and object partner. Because they are united, God can rest there in peace. God dwells eternally at the place where mind and body are united. They are united centered on true love. God created human beings to be His object partners, united with Him in mind and body. The parent-child relationship is one of lineage. Children inherit every element from their parents. From their father and mother, children inherit their internal nature and external form, which relate as subject and object partners. Taking after their mother and father, children inherit these plus and minus elements. There is nothing else they can inherit. The oneness of God is like the oneness of all the bones that constitute one body. It is from that point that our mind and body become one. After that, we come to need a partner. Man needs woman, woman needs man, and they need their children and family. 7. God is the Father who represents the mind and the first ancestor centered on true love, which has nothing to do with the fall, are the parents who represent the body. Having uncovered this truth, which had remained hidden throughout history, the Unification Church uses the name True Parents. In the original view, the ideal of creation was the horizontal True Parents, God's son and daughter. These were to have been Adam and Eve. 8. God is the God of love. Where is it that God truly loves human beings? It is in the place where people would most wish to be, and God too surely loves that place. 
That place, where God's heart and the human heart are bonded in unity, is the parent-child relationship. The parent-child relationship is the root of the universe. It is the relationship between the absolute God, who created heaven and earth, and unfallen, original human beings. The place of original value, where we are meant to arrive, is the place where God stands as the Father and we stand as His children. 9. What is the root of the universe? The beginning is love, the result is a father and son. God created the universe in order to have a relationship of love between parent and child. The root of the universe. Therefore, is the parent-child relationship. Since you are connected to the root of the universe, you need to become a parent and also a son or daughter. 10. The root of the universe is the parent-child relationship. When we ask our original mind what our life's destiny is, it will no doubt reply that it is to make God our own and to win God's love. Even if parents have ten children, their love for each one is absolute. When all people, with one accord in mind and action, call God, Father. The long withheld love of our Father, so deserving of sympathy, will flow forth. When the parental love in the Father's heart and Mother's heart flows forth from their bone marrow, and enters their children, they all feel the beginning point of utmost happiness. We can dwell there, it is the homeland of our heart. 11. People like what resembles them. Thus, the ideal world should resemble God. How did God create heaven and earth in the beginning? Genesis 1:27 reads, God created man in his own image, in the image of God he created him, male and female he created them. That God created man and woman in his image means that human beings resemble God. We like what resembles us, and because we resemble him, God also likes us. God created all things in the universe. Looking at them brings him happiness because they resemble him. 12. God is the absolute being, he is omniscient and omnipotent. But whom does God resemble? Since we are created in God's image, God resembles us. God is a personal God and it is in that way that we say He resembles human beings. It is stated that human beings were created in God's image, and certainly the Father God resembles His own children. If God resembles human beings, whom does that mean He resembles? God resembles woman and God resembles man. 13. Whom do we resemble? We resemble God. From God's vantage point, we resemble God, from our vantage point. God resembles us. In other words, in a father's eyes, his son resembles him, in the son's eyes, his father resembles him. God resembles us, and we resemble God. Whom do we resemble in terms of our desire? Our desire resembles God's desire. Because our desire resembles God's, we desire to own the best. God as the absolute being is the highest of all beings, so he does not want to settle for anything inferior. He wants the best. This is also true of our desire. 14. God is omniscient, omnipotent, omnipresent and eternal. Which point should we resemble? If we resemble Him, what does that mean for us? Since God is eternal, we should be eternal, and since God is omnipresent, we should be omnipresent. That is why we desire to live anywhere and everywhere in the world. We want to rule the entire world with almighty power. The fact that we desire such things shows that we resemble God. 15. Consider the relationship between God and human beings, with God as the Father and we as His children. If someone were to say, your children are more handsome than you, God, God would not feel bad. If he felt bad upon hearing such words, God would be no better than fallen human beings. This is why love is necessary. 4343